What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because we're back with another Building on a Budget episode. Building on a Budget is a series here on the channel where we take meta relevant and competitive decks and build them at a hundred dollar or less budget. Now just before we get into the deck profile though I want to say two things. One, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. We upload five days a week here on Spanko. On top of that if you guys want to see deck profiles, dual replays, combo videos, product openings, all that good stuff we do it here on the channel. But I do want to say a big thank you because we just hit 7,000 subscribers thank you to the entire spanko squad i wouldn't be here without you guys 8,000 is the next goal i know we can make it happen so make sure to hit that subscribe button now in today's building on a budget video we're doing tri brigade which can low-key be expensive just because of the extra deck access that it needs to get into however of course today we built it at 79 dollars that's pretty good for tri brigade so i don't want to keep you guys waiting for too long Let's get right into the deck profile. All right, so as always, we're here on TCG Player to break down exactly how much this deck will cost. Now, you guys might be thinking, hey, Spanko, this is actually $96. Why is it so high? Well, the reason for this is actually I'm going to be showing you guys two different things you guys can do with this deck. It's going to be the exact same deck list. However, there's going to be one card difference because we technically are still under a $100 budget. And the one card that's different here is the Appaloosa. So Appaloosa is a $17 card on its own. Of course, the most expensive card in this deck. So for that reason, you guys are going to see this list if you want to play the Apollo for $96. However, if we move over to the second tab over here, you guys are going to see it's still 55 items. Both are going to be 55 items. However, this one's actually at $79. The only real difference is that in this one, you actually get access to Lightheart. So Lightheart over here is only a 59 cent card versus Apollo, which is like a $17 card. So there's a pretty big difference difference here in price is a pretty big jump. However, it's very important to know that if you guys really wanted to play this on as much of a budget as possible, you can do it for $79. Let's get into the deck profile now. So to get things started off with the deck profile, of course, we're playing three Tri Brigade Fractal, three Tri Brigade Nerval, three Tri Brigade Kit, as well as two Tri Brigade Keras. Now, the reason I'm playing these ratios are honestly one because they're the best ratios, but also you're playing a lot of other cards that supplement the Tri Brigade stuff. And the best part about this deck, as you guys can see, is you're playing a lot of meta relevant hand traps that are actually very affordable now thanks to the megatons and even thanks to the crystal beast structure deck that's going to be coming out which is going to make something like ghost spell even cheaper right so for this reason we're playing these ratios for the tri brigade monsters this is all you're going to need and then you're also going to be playing double tri brigade revolt that's the perfect ratios you don't want to change these up it's very consistent on its own everything else in the deck is essentially just to supplement and help back up the tri brigade strategy the great thing about this engine is it's not a huge engine it doesn't take up too much space so really you're just going to be playing cards that can combat the meta and synergize really well with tri brigade so that's it for the tri brigades however we are playing two more tri brigade cards but funny enough we're actually not playing it for the tri brigades i'm going to be showing you guys what it is and that's two tri brigade airborne assault this card is insanely nuts so i'm going to read it out to you guys real quick the first effect is really what matters you target a beast beast warrior or wing beast monster that you control you special summon a beast beast warrior or wing beast monster from your deck in defense position with a different type and a lower attack so why is that really important because it gives Tri Brigade access to the barrier statue of Stormwinds. Imagine doing your combo, which I'm also going to be showing you guys at the end of the video, but imagine doing your full combo and then ending the combo with the barrier statues as well. You're locking your opponent out. This deck is insane when it gets the strategy off. It also helps you when your opponent has a hand trap to answer your Tri Brigade effects. You can use this to get another monster on board so that you can continue to link line. So that's why this card is insanely powerful. And then of course we are playing the one barrier statue and then we're playing the one fabled cerberell i don't know if i'm saying that name right it actually is part of your combo which is insanely powerful it's a two card combo and it actually makes herald of the arc light for you which is extremely powerful in a deck like this one because tri brigade doesn't really tend to put up a lot of negates it puts up like banishes and other kinds of disruptions but it doesn't put up a lot of negates so for that reason this card's good also it's a beast which is really cool because that means that you can also banish it later for any of your tri brigade effects as well and then of course we're playing the three rescue cat rescue cat is just so important this card plus any tri brigade name or this card plus the fabled monster is your full combo and i'm going to be showing you guys the combo at the end of the video like i said but this card is just insanely nuts and you really want to make sure this card resolves because if it does you're pretty much winning the game right now what happens if it doesn't resolve 
what happens if you know your opponent has a hand trap or you're afraid your opponent has a hand trap for the rescue cat right this is where you play a card that i've loved to tech into tri brigade recently and that is wandering griffin rider now you guys might be wondering what is the synergy between wandering griffin rider and tri brigade you're not playing an adventure package here what's the point of this so wandering griffin rider has a really cool effect where if you control no monsters you can just straight up special summon him the really cool thing about this is you can use the effect to start your turn summon the griffin rider then let's say you have a rescue cat you can normal summon the rescue cat let's say on the summon of the rescue cat your opponent has an effect veiler or an infinite impermanence to negate the rescue cat effect it doesn't matter because you still have two monsters on your side of the field which means that you can have access to your extra deck you'll have access to something like a fear g so that's why i really like griffin rider also funny enough this deck does somewhat struggle against the flunderies matchup because if they put up the barrier statue against you you have a tough time of course activating any of your tribal aid effects so for that reason you can actually play the wandering griffin rider because it's a special summon that you can use under your opponent's barrier statue go into battle phase attack over the barrier statue and then from there you can continue on with your combos so griffin rider gives you that extra body which is really important but it's also an out to stuff like barrier statue as well and then we're playing the two fire formation tanky of course because you want to search your fractal we're playing the one call by the grave call by the grave is an insanely powerful card it also protects your rescue cat but you know how good this card is in general like this card's nuts and then we're playing the one foolish burial foolish burial is really good because it can get an extra name into your graveyard or not even necessarily an extra name but an extra tri beast because this way you can get the effects off of your monsters really easily so foolish is good and then we're playing two desires the thing with this deck is it has no draw power so desires provides you with that draw power that you need to get the extra cards to your hand especially after you full combo let's say you do a full combo and you don't need the desires to combo right you can desires later after you get all your tri brigade names out of your deck and try to draw into hand traps so we are playing some hand traps we're playing three ghost spell which is pretty good this format it's good into the sprite matchup it's good into the tier matchup this card is really good and also really affordable unlike cards like ash would just take up a big bunch of your budget this card is very very affordable now with the megaton but also with the crystal beast structure deck and then we're playing three nibiru I did not think we were going to be playing Nibiru in any of the building on a budget decks. However, this card specifically is just so good right now because of the Megaton reprint, which makes it like a $2 card. But on top of that, Nibiru is just really good this format as well. It's good into the sprite matchups if they don't get gigantic sprite right away. It's good into the tier limit matchups, pretty much always good into the tier limit matchups. And it's good into any other combo matchups in general. So that's why you're playing the Nibs. And then we're playing three Chalice. Now this card, I was thinking of playing Dark Ruler instead, but I actually like the Chalice over the Dark Ruler. The only reason for that is because you still want to go first with this deck it's not like a going second deck so the thing with chalice is a chalice just gives you that extra card that you can set on your turn let's say to end your turn that you can use the disruption on your opponent's turn imperm is just a little bit too far out of the budget it's like about eight to nine bucks a pop you have like dark ruler which was also within budget i just wanted to give you guys a chalice option but if you guys wanted to play the dark ruler because of the megaton that's also an option for you and then we're playing three solemn strike solemn strike of course is just an insanely powerful card going first and going second so solemn strike i think is really good in this deck and it's just one of those cards that if you make your board and then set the strike it's just kind of like okay you're definitely not breaking this board right so that's why this card's really good and that's it for the main deck it's a 40 card main deck moving on to the extra deck i'm gonna be honest most of the budget went into this extra deck because the extra deck is really the hardest thing to put together for tri brigade and that is three tri brigade shureg this card has to be a three of in this deck because you don't have access code talker that card is just way out of budget so for that reason you have to be playing the three shureg we're playing the one rugal as well as the double fear jeet and one bear brum this is a perfect ratio for for the tri brigade extra deck monsters if you guys have an access code talker you just take out the shooter and play the access code as well but the thing is like for this because we're not playing access code you need the three shooter egg then for the non tri brigade extra deck monsters you have double dragon lords which is part of your combo end board insanely powerful card you have doom eagle doom eagle is really good in today's format because it's a quick effect dd crow and it's just one of those cards that you can make as a link three and then make a link four on top of this with whatever monster you use to bring it out essentially so doom eagle is just an insanely powerful card you're playing the one Almirage for those really random hands where you need to use Almirage for your nerve all so you're playing that playing one underworld goddess this card is pretty good in today's format as well as the fact that it's cheap now for the megatons again like i said you don't have access to apollo in the 79 dollar build but in the 95 or 96 dollar build you do have access to apollo so for that reason we're playing the actual unchained abomination because this card is another option for you instead of making the Apollyusa. if a card on the field is destroyed by card effect or destroyed by battle you can pop another card on the field why that's really good is because with your end board combo typically you go into apollo 
However, if you can't go into Apollo, you can go into this because your end board combo also gets you into a Herald, which is a negate and destroy. So if you negate and destroy with Herald, you can also use this effect to pop another card your opponent controls. So for that reason, there's a good amount of synergy between the Abomination and the Tri Brigade monsters. It's also a 3k beater for you, which is really good. You're playing the one win. Win is really important because sometimes you need to out your own barrier statue. So for that reason, you play win. It's just one of those cards that you can link this plus any other card away to make this. And then you can continue to combo from there. You're playing the one light heart, which is the card that you could swap out at any moment for the Appaloosa. Appaloosa is an insanely powerful card. We all know how good this card is. However, again, it's like a $17 card. And if you guys want to keep it down to $79 rather than $96, you can swap this out and play the light heart. Or if you guys don't mind the $96 budget, you can take out the light heart and play the Apollo. And then, like I said, we're playing the one Herald. Now, this is it for the main deck and the extra deck. Again, you can swap the light heart and the Apollo whenever you want. But I do want to show you guys this two card combo. All right, so I'm going to be showing you guys this two card combo all you need is a rescue cat and any other tri brigade name doesn't matter what the name is in this case we're going to use fractal but it could literally be any other name it doesn't matter what we're going to do is we're going to start off by normal summoning our rescue cat activating its effect to summon a keras and a kit from our deck then we're going to be special summoning our fair using these two and the really cool thing is you're going to get the kit effect so kit is always going to send the nerval but nerval in this case you're going to want to search a keras however let's say you started with a keras instead of a fractal then you can just search any other name it doesn't matter in this case because we started with a fractal we're going to search our keras because you always want to get the keras in hand however if you already have the keras it doesn't matter you get to the other name it doesn't make a difference because now you're going to be using the fairy jeet effect to special summon the other name you're not going to be summoning the keras you want to hold the keras for now you want to special summon the other name. So in this case, we're going to special summon our fractal. We're going to use the fractal effect to special summon from our extra deck. And we're going to use four cards here. We're going to use all four of the ones in our graveyard. And the reason for that is because Shurig is plays a very important part in this combo. You're obviously not going to use the Shurig effect to banish, but what you're going to do is you are going to link the Shurig as well as the fractal off into a bear brum. Now, why is Shurig really important? Because now it gets to search a tri-beast monster from your deck with a level equal to or less than the amount of tri-beasts you have banished. Right now we have four, so we can search any level four or lower tri-beast monster. So for this reason, we're gonna be searching our fabled Cerberel. Now this card is insanely powerful because it summons itself back from the graveyard. It also gives your Keras access to special summon itself. So keep this in mind, you still have three bricks in your hand at this point, right? All you need to do is be able to summon your Keras by pitching the Cerberel, activate the Cerberel effect to now summon itself back from the graveyard. But before we go into Herald of the Arclight here, which this now gives you access to, you're gonna use the Keras effect to banish two cards, the two that we now have in our graveyard, to summon a double dragon lords all right then what you're going to do is you're going to use the keras as well as the fabled to summon herald of the arc light so now you have the herald negate and you have a double dragon lords disruption now if you're playing the appaloosa you can use the bear brum as well as the fair jeet to make an apollo with two monster negates to give you more negates however if you wanted to go with the 79 dollar budget without the apollo you can use these two instead to just make an abomination because what ends up happening is abomination is just another form of disruption it's not monster negates like apollo is however it is field destruction so it is another form of disruption in itself and then here you can use the bear brum effect to search a revolt however let's just say your hand actually looked like this and you have three bricks in your hand what you can do is you can use the bear brum as chain link one but you can choose to use the fair jeet as chain link two just in case your opponent wants to ash this I'd, I'd be surprised if they haven't asked you already at this point but just in case they didn't want to ash it you can chain block here it kind of fixes your hand because you can put away the extra dead cards in your hand we're going to be wanting to get the revolt and then we're going to pass our turn on the revolt set okay so we're going to pass our turn like this and what ends up happening is we have the herald of arc light negation we have the ancient warriors disruption we have the tri brigade revolt which is going to summon a shureg and shureg is going to banish our opponent's card which is three disruptions right there already and then you have the abomination which is a pop so you have four disruptions right here if you have the apostle you actually have five because you have two monster negates and this is all off of two cards and you still have two cards in hand so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy i wanted to show you guys two different ways you guys can build the deck both are still under a hundred dollars however the major change is just the apollo because apollo is a pretty big card to put into the budget however if you guys do want to build this deck for under a hundred dollars i think apollo is a must go to because that card is just so good in tri brigade now if you guys did enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this one we upload five days a week here on spanko and if you guys want to see deck profiles, dual replays, combo videos, all that good stuff, it's always going to be here. So I hope you guys enjoy. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you guys for 7,000 again. Let's get to 8,000 now. I believe in every single one of you. This Banco squad, I love all you guys. Thank you guys for watching. And with that, thank you signing out. Peace.